Helios, shivering, teeth clenched, pulls his cloak close for warmth, but there is no warmth to be found here in this place. <sighs> Oh, if only I had a fire. No, no, I, I hate fire. <sighs> he trudges slowly, leaning into the murky cold wind, his trusty axe slung over shoulder. The millennia old stone path takes him around a boulder onto a jetty on the edge of an impossibly wide black river. Moored to the rickety wooden structure is an equally rickety wooden skiff, just big enough for two people. A desiccated Father Time figure stands in the bow, long tattered white robes and even longer silver beard, holding a long push pole. From the end of that pole hangs a lantern. Fancy a lift, friend. No, no, I, I, I hate water. Taiki favors you then. It isn't water. The man holds out a gnarled old hand to assist, and Helios accepts, getting into the stern. I am Charon. Helios is stricken to recognize the name from childhood tales. Charon, the ferryman of Hades and the river Styx, a sole guide to the place of the dead. Hades? Hey. I'm not dead. <laughs> you are dead. I, I am not. I'm not dead. <laughs> so say they all. A dead white hand from the river plucks at Helios's cloak, another at his arm, yet another his leg. He flinches, staggers, and almost topples. Eyes terror struck. Don't rock the boat. I hate boats! The skiff moves soundless through a dark void. The only light, the lantern lit from within an ill natural glow. The river, a roiling mass of discombobulated haunted souls. I hate death! Back in the land of the living, the rolling Targonian is a ghost ship, completely deserted. No sign of captain, cook, or crew except on the command deck, where Augie, Badia, and Rainbow huddle over a body, Helios. On his back, on top of crates, salt and burning candles arrayed in a circle around him. Badia kneels reverently beside the half-minotaur, busy chanting a spell enchantment on an endless loop. Is he dead, do you think? She checks for a pulse while Augie listens for breath. He's breathing. A banshee howling ill wind suddenly assaults the ship, screeching like a metal band of demons. No wonder Omba and the crew fled. Maintain the salt. I'll protect the candle flames. Back on the river Styx, the ferryman propels the skiff with powerful strokes. Haunted, iridescent souls, a mixture of species, humans, giants, atars, tritons, claw, manically at Helios, attracted to the purity of life, like bugs to a flame. Uh, uh, what is that? What is that? <laughs> Damn those needy souls. The needy souls clawed the boat, trying to clamber aboard, eager to get to Helios, to the warmth of his life essence. Helios quickly wraps the hands like a mother would a troublesome child trying to steal cookies. <laughs> no! 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 Are we there yet? Depends. What is your destination? On cue, as if someone had read Helios's mind, the tapestry of darkness pulls back like a theatrical curtain to reveal the greener pastures. The Soul River gives way to grassy hinterlands, spotted with colorful wild flowers, capped with endless blue skies. Helios reflexively leaps to the grassy shore, eager to be free of the boat. Do I owe you a fee? I'll collect on your next voyage. 
The ferryman pushes off from shore in search of his next fare. But what am I doing here? The boat begins to fade like a distant dream come morning. Sometimes you need to travel the river less paddled to get your soul right. Sometime later, Helio stands alone in a field of tall grass and wild flowers. The scene shifts like a mirage, slightly out of focus. In the distance, echoes carry the sound of rampaging hooves and heavy chuffing. Helio strains, blinking, trying to bring clear his vision. A minotaur charges over the rise, a full head of steam. It too, like the surrounding field, is fuzzy and out of focus. Pa, is, is that... Is that you? Closer now, the Minotaur snaps into sharp focus. You're not Pa, you're me! It's Helios, all right. A divine avatar, a perfect replica of our Minotaurus friend in every way, except this faux version is the metaphysical concept of fear, dressed in Helios's armor. The construct is meaner and more bestial, and in no way afraid, ah. it raises its axe in challenge. Face your fears! Help! Somebody! <laughs> Augie, Adia, and Rainbow magically appear, answering his distress call. They are not, however, his mortal friends, but instead stylized, supersized figments of his imagination. The m, &M crew, Mycenaean Muses. The three Muses take in the situation. What's the situation this time? A bull? A bull fighter. A tragedy in three acts. You're so damn predictable. Can we try a different story structure for once, please? You'd prefer what? Oh, dance fight! If I knew we were attending a dance, I would have worn my heels. Keep the beast yet, bay. I need to consult my spell book, see what's on the menu. I've got you, Flink. Flink stick. He Chan leaps into combat, intercepting the charging beast. The Helios avatar lowers its horns, attempting to gore the monk, but misses, just as Agi leaps clear. Is that your best shot? That's it? Helios stands frozen, mouth agape, awed by the spectacle. The Eminem crew are slick and effective fighting force, augmented boldly by Helios's fertile imagination. Helios, you like fire, right? This was called out in our pre-mission briefing. No, I hate... I hate fire! Oh, too bad. I'm afraid this situation calls for fire. No, no fire! <sighs> too late, the sorceress hurls a chromatic fire orb. Helios' avatar swiftly backhands the flying orb with his axe, returning serve, sending it exploding at Badia's feet. Greener pastures turn quickly to redder pastures as flames spread. See? See? Never play with fire! Helios tap dances, attempting to avoid the growing flames. Y you think that was a mistake? <laughs> I twist plans within plans. <laughs> My role calls for me to die in sacrifice, valiantly. He attacks, striking the Helios avatar with <laughs> his bow stick. Poor thing, he just needs love. Rainbow takes the edge of the beast's cloak, spinning. Hello, friend. Do you want to dance? Ole! Uh, you really should accept. She's a free spirit on the dance floor. That's not the only place I'm a free spirit. Augie, also a free spirit, tap dances on the Minotaur's face. One, two, Oh, do two half minotaurs make a whole? You are a pathetic mathematician. Oh, I'm a writer, remember? That's why I have been tasked with inking this epic ballad. Helios' avatar gently takes her dainty hand and for a moment they are prince and princess engaged in a romantic waltz. But then he tosses her hard. Rainbow flies 20 feet, performing a majestic ballet jeté. She stumbles the landing. Cheers rain down from the gallery. 
the universe mocking her roundly. She gets up, embarrassed and angry, nose raised to the camera. Well, you try dancing with someone with no feet and see how well you do. I guess it's up to me to end this dance battle. Dance like your balls are on fire, Cretton! <laughs> Let's check in on Augie Muse. With his bow stick of blur, Augie plays the Minotaur's horns like a triangle dinner bell. Augie, remember, if you kill him, he can't kill you. Don't change the script. We're in Hades. He'll find a mouth to jump into. The Helios avatar performs embarrassing shame damage. Open palm slap to Augie's chest, driving him to the ground. Augie refocuses the kinetic energy, Aikido style, performs a kip up, bouncing back straight into the Minotaur's face and headbutts him violently. This is Helios's world, and you weren't invited into this lavish do. Worlds away on Chaldea Prime, Helios' friends barely maintain order as wind and spirits try to disrupt Helios. Badia continues to chanting unabated while Augie and Rainbow struggle to maintain salt and flame against the supernatural wind. Something is very angry with Helios! Back in Hades, in the pit of Helios' mind, Rainbow recovers from her embarrassing dance dismount and throws a special spell at her former dance partner. Tasha's laughter, Tasha's hideous laughter, Tasha's uncontrollable hideous laughter, Tasha's- Okay, okay, we've got it. Tasha's supreme uncontrollable hideous laughter, fizzles. It was all set up and no punchline. Helios' avatar chuckles, but not because of the spell, just because he's amused at we humanoid thing casting spells. Suddenly, an axe comes into frame and Helios' avatar blocks it. Who are you? Helios' avatar sneers at Helios, pure, unadulterated hatred and anger. I am what you would be if you weren't so afraid. <laughs> Badia, showtime! Badia drops the mother of all fire orbs on target. ka Umbo. Badia staggers back, startled and kind of impressed. <sighs> That's big enough for you? Augie continues the assault against the now burning avatar. Finally, beaten to an inch of his life, Helios' avatar drops his axe and then to one knee, burning, bloody, and bruised. I think he's had enough, Augie. Augie kicks their adversary sharply in the chest, sending him ass over tea kettle onto his back. This is Helios' world. He is your benefactor. You will show him respect. Through the burning pain, Helios' avatar looks up. Forget everything and run, or face everything and rise! The choice is yours! I am not afraid! You are still a beast at bay! Back in the real world on the Rolling Targonian, the runes on the handle of Helios' axe illuminate as a new rune appears. You see that? It's working! Badia shakes her head knowingly and continues to chant. Helios's mind is empty and dark, like his foul mood, and yet somewhere in the void we hear low, indiscernible voices in conversation, like thoughts debating. Are we dead? No. I don't feel dead. Not for lack of trying on someone's part. Ow! You're kicking me! Stop pushing! That wasn't me! There's something alive in here! But we're in Hades! Nothing is alive in here! I'm alive, I think. Wait, I see something. Do, do you see what I see? Depends on what you see. I have dark vision and I, I can't see shit. I can't see shit either. And I have true vision. I have Lucanor's miraculous sight. I have God's sight. I can see between the tapestries of worlds, gaze across the astral, the ethereal, and into the shadow realm. Never mind. You smell that? Yes. That's the south end of a northbound Stygian worm. Warm, eh? 
On cue, as if someone had read Helios's mind, the tapestry of darkness pulls back like a theatrical curtain revealing the Stygian bog. Helios and his three muse companions stand in the middle of the most heinous, murky, damn swamp ever imagined. Oh, 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 these were my best slippers. Couldn't your imagination have taken us someplace nicer? <laughs> oh, like the Elysian Fields. My Uncle Finn has a fine halfling hole there. A grand swamp to the horizon, salt grass, pickleweed, and moss-covered cypress. And the worst of it, everything covered in brackish, green, pond scum, and mucus that could have only come from the nose of a Cthulian elder. Ew! It's squishy! Do you mind? I am the shortest. Rainbow climbs onto Helios' back and shoulders. Something moves in the shadows, followed by a splash. Did you see that? I hate swamps! Beneath the water, something oddly alien sweeps fast past the gravers, causing them all to leap in fear. Is it? Four Helios? Again? It's a foe, all right, but not that kind of foe, you know. Adia crouches into a low wand dueling stance, then casts firebolts rapidly every which way. Spectacular explosions of fire erupt wherever she points, but doing little perceived damage, more bark than bite. What's the point in that? A preemptive strike at the heart of fear, yes? No, you're just gonna run out of spells. It's okay, my arsenal is endless. Helios doesn't understand spellcraft. A rigid back from that of a prehistoric swamp creature arcs, pushing above the surface 10 feet distant, and then disappears again. We are not alone. It's okay, Helios. We won't abandon you. Should I attack? Wait your turn to die, Argy. First let me see if I can arouse it with my foreplay spell play. Badia orchestrates a few more firebolts into the bog that explode like erupting geysers, but do little else. Rainbow and Augie perform an amused, slow clap. Your paper tiger shock and awe campaign was most impressive. No. Tigers. I hate tigers. Badia suddenly disappears, sucked violently under. Badia! The water is only ankle deep. Where could she have gone? This is Helios's world, remember? In his mind, you seriously expect rational and consistent planar constants. I'm, I, I'm, I'm in my mind? Badia suddenly reappears, splashing and gasping for air. <gasps> it's a bog spirit! The bog spirit's serrated spinal dorsal protrusion continues to rise and fall as it stalks our heroes, circling them. Badia pushes her hands into the water and casts shocking grasp. Violent electricity arcs and fizzles in the water, sending static energy radiating. Everyone shakes, teeth rattling as they are electrified. One beat, two beat, three agonizing beats later. What are you doing? Trying to fry us? The bog wouldn't burn, so I thought, hmm, maybe electrify. And us? I know water is an excellent conductor of electricity, Bidia. Never stand near water during a lightning storm, my pa used to say. Well, shit. The shock, however, did have its desired effect on the bog spirit. It breaches, revealing its full, true nature. A plant, crocodile, unholy union. The crocodilian, a metaphysical concept of fear, is Lizard-like, with stubby snout, long tail, and short limbs. Uh, tree limbs, that is. Face your fear. The creature bolts directly at Helios, its long tail crashing violently. Augie leaps, coming down on the abomination in an effort to subdue, exerting every ounce of strength in a massive bear hug. The crocodile goes into a death roll, taking Augie with him, thrashing the monk mercilessly. Oh, Augie is a true blessing and a gift from the gods. With a terminal death wish. Rainbow leaps off of Helios' shoulder and flings her magical chakram. Chakra 
Om Chakra! I hate bog monsters, especially imaginary ones, from my imagination. He charges using rage as fuel, hacking and slashing. Each swing of his axe turns up wood, sap, and stygian gore. Not far away, Badia casts Guiding Bolt. She turns casually to the camera like a Rubenstein practitioner to a class of minor wizards, explaining the art of magic. Guiding Bolt is a lesser spell related to Guiding Bolt. Admittedly, it has limited uses as the emphasis is on guiding balls, but since my good friend here is a ball... A flash of light streaks toward the bog creature and misses, shooting wide over its head. Wait for it. The flash of light arcs and comes back around, hitting the croc in the back in a radiant explosion of rainbow light. Badia returns to the classroom lecture. And that, folks, is how it is done proper, because I have a divine soul which makes me favored by the gods. Look it up. Um, which gods are those exactly, Badia? Mycenaean? Norse? Anum? All of them. Go away. Back to the death roll. The bog croc is on high spin cycle. All we can see is a spinning vortex of water, teeth, fists, tail. It's all too much to grok. It's so confusing. The bog croc's thick wooden tail whips out and slaps helos, sending him sailing 10 feet. Rainbow attempts a sneak attack. But how do you sneak up on a crocodile on high spin? Exactly, right? The chakram goes into the churning mess and gets spit out. Okay, well, that was pointless. Get up, you big oaf. This is your quest. You should get in there and take care of it. Why am I doing all the heavy lifting? Helios charges past her, hacking at the creature's tail like a lumberjack. Bam, 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 bam. Finally, the tail comes clean off. In the tumult of agony, the bog spirit jettisons Agi, flinging him up like a rag doll landing awkwardly at Rainbow Street. You see that? It was like I was wrestling a mountain. You fancy yourself Hercules now, hmm? Some legendary hero. Why not? I think I can. Badia gathers with him in support of Helios as he stands over the dying bog spirit. What are you? Everything you fear. I am not afraid. Forget everything and run face everything and rise the choice is yours i choose to leave this place yeah i'm out i'm out i'm done back on the rolling targonian the runes on the handle of helios's axe illuminate as a new rune appears oh there's another one you see it I don't know what's going on in there, but it is working! Badia smiles, continuing to chant. Augie pours more salt into the circle as insurance. How do you imagine he's doing without our help? Helios' mind is empty, dark, angry, hot, and yet somewhere in the hot void, we hear low, indiscernible voices in conversation, like thoughts debating. Bloody hell, it's hot in here. Where are we this time? Oh, better not be a labyrinth. I know you minotaurs love labyrinths. No, no, no. We, we don't. It's a popular misconception. My people hate labyrinths. Really? Do tell. Hello? Prison? Confined? Wandering around? Lost in the dark forever? Like in this bloody hole? Hmm. Well, there you go. You learn something new every day. Where to now? Act three. We face the crucible. Uh-uh. There is no we. I am going it alone. Is that wise? Are you quite certain? Yes. I have to face my own fears alone. I can't stand behind you my whole life. I'm tired of being afraid. I'll cover your plank, buddy. <laughs> no, I appreciate it, but I must go alone. On cue, as if someone had read Helios's mind, the tapestry of darkness pulls back like a theatrical curtain, revealing the tinderbox. Helio stands on the edge of an angry, active volcano, a fortress of courage. 
heroic music swells as reddish orange glow from a superheated lava illuminates his determined, defiant features. He steps close to the edge, hooves on the brink. Oh, oh it's harder than I remember. Ooh. No shit. It's a tinderbox. Not exactly your favorite place. Helio spins to find the M&M crew. What, what, what are you doing here? We said we wouldn't abandon you. Come away from the ledge, Helios. Badia leans out, looking into the crater. She nudges a rock with her toe, sending it falling slowly into the lava. Oh, you've fallen there. Forget about any healing spell saving you. Lava is the hottest kind of fire, and you know you hate... Fire, fire, I, I, I know. You are my friends. I, I appreciate what you are doing, okay? But I must do this alone. I, I must. You insist? I, I do. I'll be backstage if you need me. Badia kisses Helios tenderly on the cheek, nods at the halfling, indicating it was time to go, and disappears. Nothing is ever quite as scary as the images we conjure in our own minds. Remember that, Helios. A moment later, Helios stands alone on the precipice once more, a tiny speck against the immensity of the tinderbox. Inside the lava-filled crater, a hulking spark, a construct of fear, rises out of the lava and around it, kindlings by the hundreds. Face your fears! Helios looks at his axe, feeling the weight of his oldest ally and friend. I guess it's just you and me. He leaps into the crater. As Helios plummets, back we go to the rolling Targonian. Helios, in a fevered dream state, thrashes about, arms and legs kicking and flailing. I am not afraid! You don't scare me! You don't scare me! Aggie, hold it down! I'm trying! Together, the two try to keep Helios subdued, but the Minotaur is bucking like a bronco and much too strong for the pair. A hoof kicks wide, disrupting the protective salt line. Oh, fix the salt! Augie pours more salt, but loses his leverage on Helios. The big man's hand flails and almost knocks over it. Dando! Rainbow quickly puts it to rights before it falls. The demon inside Helios is more than they can contain. Badia! Badia just shrugs and continues to chant, afraid to stop. Helios almost sits up. We're losing you. Something large lands on Helios' chest, pinning him. It's Snaggle. The Gekon's weight and downward pressure is sufficient to keep their friend from doing any more harm. Fodder. In the tinderbox crater, Helios is mid-death plunge. All the planar constants are functioning normally, including gravity, propelling him at terminal velocity. He falls fast and true, straight at the spark like one of Badia's favored by the gods fire spells. I am not afraid! On Helios' axe, the last remaining rune comes to life. I do love fireworks. He raises the axe, ready to strike. Helios and the spark come together in a titanic explosion, setting off volcanic fireworks. The tinderbox erupts like Forever Mountain when Ichabod awakens. That's a reference to a future super event, a bit of a spoiler, sorry. On the rolling Targonian, Helios sits bolt upright, finding, weirdly, Snaggle on top of him. Everyone lurches, staring at their wild-eyed friend. I am not afraid anymore. Are you okay? How are you feeling? I feel like a cow. <laughs> Hand me that candle. Why? She hands him one of the candles and he immediately sticks the flame to his hair. Oh, no, 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 That is uh, great, uh, Helios, you're not afraid, but you are still flammable. Oh. Badia giggles and places a loving, healing hand to his face. You did it. And alive, too. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Look. 
It's complete. Everyone leans close to inspect the finely crafted weapon. I thought for a moment you were going to leave us. I did leave you. It was a real place. And you were there? And you? And you? <laughs> Suddenly, a column of light cascades down from the heavens, casting Helios in a halo of starlight. Everyone gazes skyward to see Artisan, larger than anyone has seen before, hovers directly over the ship and Helios. And for a beat, Helios and Artisan lock eyes. Helios stands, raising his axe. Father, Papa, I did it. I went to Kauhala, and I am not afraid. I'm not afraid. <laughs> Father, Papa, I did it. I went to Kauhala, and I am not afraid. I'm not afraid. <laughs> I'm not afraid. Oh. I got the timeshare too. You should all come. It's great. Oh. Yeah. You can call. Uh, there's uh, blackout dates are uh, Monday through Saturday. Are the snacks included? Uh, uh, no. Oh, well, it's not nearly as enticing. <laughs> but okay. still, thank I you. Gotta, the I cheese gotta, is, if you don't okay. ask questions.